All right, mate, I'm out. We've come for a little kitchen cookout on the campfire. Uh, we're on the Gower Peninsula in South Wales, and we've come to Oxwich Bay. We found the perfect little spot, really close to the car park as well. This is the spot we're going to be camping in. We've got a nice little wind block there. The wind's coming from that direction. Got my man. Got a nice view of the sea in the morning. I think the sun should come up in that direction. Yeah, it'll be a gorgeous night. We're going to make some goulash. Slovakian goulash, my boyfriend's mum's recipe. On the campfire in our... So the second time we've used our like cast iron Dutch oven, so I'm super excited. Thought I'd just uh, bring you along for the ride, so let's do it. So in terms of cooking setup, we've uh, bought this uh, Dutch oven, like cast iron Dutch oven. Absolutely stunning. It's only the second time we've used it. Second time that we've used it. But it's really cool. Um, the lid doubles up as like a skillet, so you can, you know, fry your eggs or whatever for breakfast on there. Really cool. Um, and you can see where I burnt on last time, so we've re-seasoned it. It's gonna need a little bit more TLC, I think. And it came with this cool little carry kit um, and like a handle to get the lid off when we need to. And then ages and ages ago, I'd bought this tripod on Amazon and then finally bought the, uh, the crockery or whatever to go with it, the cookware to go with it. Um, and it looks really flimsy, but it's really sturdy actually. It holds this up, no problem. And it's got a little hook in the middle, I'll show you. Nice. Yeah, so there's a little hook in the middle there, which you're going to hang a pot onto. Build the fire up into the fire pot. We're trying to get out of the habit of buying logs, because at the moment they're like £8 a bag, and it takes two bags to um, cook, you know, one meal. And I think it takes some of the fun out of having a campfire. It costs £16 at time. So what we're trying to do is collect as much driftwood as possible, um, and yeah, use that to burn instead. With any luck, we might even take some with us and have a little wood store at home with some old driftwood. Um, so that's what we're doing now, constructing the fire. It's really good practice to surround your fire pit with stones or something. It just stops the fire spreading any further than that point. You can allow it to get like a nice little burn on without worrying about damaging the grass around it or anything like that. And I don't feel too bad. I always feel a bit nervous about the whole leave no trace ethos of having fires, but there are several fire pits around here and this is the biggest and most recent looking one. So that's what we're using. scary yeah that's what I'm talking about Look. so I'm sure that you can tell I'm not exactly a professional at bushcraft skills I sort of wing it when I build a fire not necessarily the person to give you advice on that not yet anyway <laughs> I've been working on my skills but now we just let the fire core cool, get nice and warm uh, we warm up the kettle and we've got some like homemade forage nettle tea we're going to drink just before dinner. I'm not going to ruin the rest of the video with my talking just because there's some amazing like campfire cooking ASMR. If you want the recipe for this one I did just share it under a reel on my Instagram and if you're watching this a long time after I posted it then feel free to send me a message and I'll, uh, I'll share it with you.
for luck and it's all for luck. So there you have it, that's what date night looks like in the Alventures household. We had a gorgeous night, the scenery was gorgeous, food was gorgeous. I love cooking outdoors on a fire, I think. Take you back to your roots, being a caveman. It doesn't have to cost anything to cook on a fire, you know. You can do it just with some tin foil or nothing at all. And I've got to say, I highly recommend it. So, peace.